Welcome, my friends. Kevin Shirky here, the Indiana Jones nerd, and it's time yet again for an Indiana Jones news roundup. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the long-awaited fifth Indiana Jones movie, hit theaters at the end of June. Fans dressed up in their Indiana Jones cosplay to attend screenings all over the world. The film has received mixed but mostly positive reviews. IMDb users gave it 6.9 out of 10, while over at Rotten Tomatoes, the film was certified fresh with a 69% from critics and an 88% audience score. The box office results, though, left much to be desired, with the film making only $252 million through its first two weekends. Nevertheless, it has been an incredible couple of weeks for fans, seeing their favorite movie character plastered all over billboards, buses, theater photo ops, and more. Disneyland got in on the hype with its first ever Indiana Jones face character at the park. Indy can be seen walking around Adventureland, interacting with guests, and signing autographs for a limited time. Uh, well, you know, there's, a, there's actually one artifact in these parts that I find really intriguing. Yeah? Uh, it's a shoe. It's uh, supposed to be made out of some kind of crystal glass. What's really bizarre is this, this princess and I actually have quite a bit in common. But in the text it says that this princess also runs away from a ball. The park also offered the long-awaited return of the Indiana Jones pinball machine. And a new pastry was introduced, a mango pineapple passion fruit turnover, known as the Forbidden Turnover, based on the Eye of Mara. Many guests visited the park donning Indiana Jones fedoras, t-shirts, and even full cosplay, myself included. A British star is a soaring soul, as free as a mountain bird. His energetic fish should be ready to fly to Victoria Bird. Indy, my friend! I am already missing you. And don't forget, you can still visit Disney World's Hollywood Studios to check out the Den of Destiny. Running through August 15th, it offers numerous Indiana Jones-themed snacks, beverages, and a display of props and costumes from the new movie. Speaking of which, many props and costumes were also on display at Hollywood's El Capitan Theater, including the Dial of Destiny, the Lance of Longiness, fedoras from the original trilogy, and the Ark of the Covenant itself, which was a real treat to see. An Indiana Jones fan named Alex Curtis is putting together an event for fans in New York next month that sounds really cool. The Hudson Valley Adventure Weekend will feature excursions to a haunted mine, a rock labyrinth, a winery, and more. Fans are encouraged to wear their gear and be ready to crack some bullwhips. Taking place August 11th through 13th, it's going to be a great opportunity to meet other Indiana Jones fans on the East Coast. The Houston Symphony have announced Raiders of the Lost Ark in concert. The film will be screened and accompanied by a live symphony orchestra. That will be coming in November at the aptly named Jones Hall in Houston. Hasbro announced the third wave of their Indiana Jones adventure series featuring four characters from Last Crusade and two from Dial of Destiny. The build-in artifact for this wave will be the Grail Table, complete with the True Grail and several fakes. And it's not just Hasbro having all the fun. Sideshow and Hot Toys have revealed a stunning 1 6th scale indie figure based on Dial of Destiny. And Mezco are offering a beautiful 1 12th scale Raiders of the Lost Ark indie. San Diego Comic Con will be taking place July 20th through 23rd and will offer some exclusives that indie fans won't want to miss. A short round Funko Pop, which was previously announced as a GameStop exclusive, will now be a Comic Con exclusive instead. An action figure of Steven Spielberg will be available in this beautiful Jurassic Park Hammond Collection set. There was also a rumor that an exclusive Lego set based on Kingdom of the Crystal Skull's fridge scene would be available at Comic-Con, though this one sounds like maybe a fake rumor to me. So that's going to conclude this edition of Indiana Jones News Roundup. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on all this down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I wish you all fortune and glory. Bye-bye.